Hey, it's three o'clock, so I think we are ready to go. I had to pause and wait a moment because I have a clock here that has bird sounds when it turns the hour, so I didn't want you all to hear that. Um, but it's really nice to have everybody on the call today. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to our very first virtual coffee talk for teachers, um, where we are going to review and discuss why it feels critical to in the midst of a pandemic um, and the virtual resources that USIP has to help you and your students. So I am uh, Megan Chabalowski and I'm a program officer here at the US Institute of Peace um, where I lead our work on the public education team with American K-12 schools. And I'm Anne Louise Colgan. I'm the director of public education at the US Institute of Peace. At USIP, the public education program is really like the national outreach program. It includes our work with K-12 schools and also our work with broader public audiences across the country. It is great to have such a diverse group of participants here today, some folks we know through previous work together and some new contacts. And I believe we are joined by four of our Peace Teachers. The Peace Teachers program is a year-long professional development opportunity through which USIP works closely with a set of educators who introduce our resources into their curriculum. And we're really happy to have you with us, <clears throat> Sarah and Jill, <clears throat> excuse me, and Emily and Matt. And we're really glad to have all of you join us. We all at USIP deeply appreciate your work as educators at all times, but especially now during this pandemic. And we're looking forward to this session. Great. Uh, before we get started, we want to go through a little, a few logistics. Um, next slide, please. So to let you all know, your mics are muted. Um, you are in listen-only mode. That said, we do want to hear from you. So you all, if you, uh, for those who are from, not familiar with Zoom, if you hover your mouse over the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see a couple different options. There is a Q&A box. This is where you can ask questions. Um, there's an upvote function so you can see other people's questions and thumbs up someone else's question if it's of interest to you as well. Um, there is also a chat box so there will be a couple of times when we ask you to comment in the chat box um, so please use that for any comments you might have. Please also use the chat box if you're having any tech difficulties and our team will um, try to support you as best as we can. Finally, we are recording this. Um, it may be made available on our website, so I just wanted everyone to be aware of that. Um, to give us all a sense of where everyone's tuning in from, because I know this is a diverse group from across the country, I'd love for us to test our use of the chat box right away. And if you could post in there where you're tuning in from, uh, I think it would be great to see where everyone is at the moment. And they're coming in. Fantastic. This is great. Wow. What a wonderful opportunity to get to talk to everybody at the same time. This is great. Well, thank you all for joining us from across the country. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Anne Louise now for folks who don't know USIP or us very well to tell you a little bit more about the Institute and about the public education team. Thanks, Megan. Um, I think it's always good to start with a few words about USIP to provide some context and some grounding. We're actually marking our 35th anniversary this year. So we've been around for a while and I imagine most of you are at least a little bit familiar with us, but we thought we'd cover some of the basics up front. The United States Institute of Peace was established by Congress in 1984 as a national nonpartisan independent institute dedicated to preventing and resolving international conflicts through nonviolent means. We were created after two decades of work inside and outside of Congress. Inside of Congress, this was a bipartisan effort that was led by veterans of World War II, who felt that this country needed a national institution to prepare us to wage peace as effectively as our military academies prepare us for war. And then outside of Congress, it was a grassroots effort across the country, which mobilized tens of thousands of people who then spurred on that congressional action. We were created to be a resource for the American people and the government, and we work every day very hard to build peace in practical ways and to help make peace possible. 
Today I'm coming to you from my basement in Washington, DC, but in normal times, we're based at USIP's headquarters at the Northwest corner of the National Mall in Washington, DC. We have a striking building and it's intended to be a symbol of this country's commitment to peace. And it serves as the hub for the peace building work that we do around the world. And then this map shows us the scope of that work and helps I think to bring it to life in terms of its global geography. In terms of our approach at USIP, we essentially do three things. We think, we act, and we educate. We are a leading resource with deep expertise. We are also working on the ground in conflict zones, working with people and with communities on the front lines, dealing with violent conflict, and then supporting their efforts to build peace in practical ways in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, Tunisia and Colombia. And then we provide education and training to make those efforts most effective, working with women, with youth, with faith leaders, with police and the military and others in these places. And then complementing that work to build peace internationally, USIP also serves the American people directly as a core part of our original founding mandate from Congress. We work with schools and universities and organizations across the United States to share USIP's work and resources to show how conflicts can be resolved without violence and how peace building is happening and is making a difference and why it matters to all of us. We know that violent conflicts dominate international headlines and we are deeply committed to finding ways to flip that script and shine a light on examples of peace building in action. And we are committed to finding opportunities for the American people to get engaged in that work with us. We have a long history of work with educators and with students and now that we are all challenged by this switch to the virtual world, we are in this with you and we are figuring out the best ways to continue to be a resource in this new environment where a lot of the themes on which we work seem very resonant. Megan is our team lead working with schools across the country. So I'll now pass it back to you, Megan, to take us through the beginning part of this agenda. Great, thank you, Emily's. So Last week, we at USIP marked Teacher Appreciation Week, and one of the things we did was create a special video highlighting the qualities that peace builders and teachers have in common and beginning to talk a little bit about why it feels so vital to teach about peace during the pandemic. So we wanted to continue the conversation because some themes really arose from this, this process, and these are themes that really that we find resonate with a lot of the teachers we work with. So we are going to dig a little more deeply into some of those themes in this webinar. That said, I do wanna point out that we know that circumstances vary widely across the country and that um, they vary across school districts right now and that everyone's experiences are completely different. Um, so the resources we're gonna talk about today are really to give you a sense of what we have to offer and how you can begin to integrate this content into your teaching in distance learning and then when we're back in the classroom. Um, and they're meant to be really flexible and adaptable so that you can take them and use them um, whatever your context. So we have no expectations that everyone will be able to or want to use everything we talk about, but we hope at least we're going to spark some ideas and that you will know by the end of this that we're here as a resource for you. Um, and you can think of, you know, you'll know ways to follow up with us. Um, so uh, let's begin by exploring the first theme, the first reason why we feel it is so vital to teach about peace during the pandemic. Next slide, please. The next one. May I, actually, let's go back to that one. I'm sorry, I should have said next slide. Thanks. Um, for those who would like to see the video that I just talked about, um, this is a link and, um, to it, and you can find it on our website as well. So I encourage you to go and watch it. It features a number of our wonderful peace teachers. Um, and so uh, I'd love for you to go check it out. Next slide, please. So the first theme, the first reason is that it gives students hope and provides them with positive stories and examples. Um, so we've been hearing from teachers that students are especially worried about the state, uh, the current state and the future of our world. So one of the ways we hope we can help is by providing them with practical examples of positive actions that people are taking. So USAP has launched a new campaign called Peace in Pandemics, hashtag Peace in Pandemics, um, which includes inspirational stories of on the ground peace building, of nonviolent activism, and of community leadership during the pandemic. 
Um, you can find them all on social media using this hashtag and also on our website. I wanted to share one in particular with you that really stood out to me because of the role that youth have played in it. Um, and it's this photo here on the left. Uh, it is from Tunisia, uh, where we have been doing uh, work for several years. In late March, youth from marginalized communities in the city of Medanina deliver about $1,000 worth of hand sanitizers and masks to the National Guard. So this is a symbolic gesture of trust and cooperation. It's actually really rare in Tunisia between the uh, security forces and between citizens because there still exists a great tension between the government and citizens following the uprising. And in fact, months ago, this act of goodwill would have been very unlikely. So what's different is that um, USIP uh, and local Tunisian leaders led a me mediation effort between youth and police in, in these communities. Um, and it led to increased compassion and solidarity from both sides something that the youth have reported on. And a member of the National Guard has since said, and I love this quote, we are optimistic about getting through this period. Seeing young people being creative in their response gives me hope. Um, and this is an unusual act for them to see and is something that I think is a great story and a great message, both about the role that youth can play um, in making a difference, um, but also a story from a place where maybe we hear more of uh, negative headlines. So this is an example of the kinds of stories you'll see in Peace and Pandemics. Um, so I hope you will check that out and consider using some of those stories with your students. Um, you can also find more stories on USIP's website that are more broadly about peace builders. So these include our Olive Branch blog post, um, in videos on USIP's YouTube page, and in our On Peace podcast. So these are all permanent resources to you, um, even once the pandemic is over. Um, one of the things we, we talk about when we talk about why it's so important to share real stories of real people is that it has the additional benefit of building empathy. Um, it can create these bonds by drawing out what people have in common and help connect what's happening globally with what's happening locally. Um, so it's important to be sharing these real stories of real peace builders. So then the next theme, if we could move to the next slide, it provides students with important knowledge about the current situation. So we want you to think of USIP as a reliable source of information for you and your students on current events. This information can help broaden your students' perspectives and their understanding of today's global conflicts and challenges, and it can lead to creative problem solving. So USIP has a new series, hashtag COVID and conflict, which gathers stories of how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting fragile states and conflict zones, which is a really important storyline right now. And it includes short videos of USIP experts discussing the impact of the pandemic on specific countries or on peace building approaches. The latest videos are on the Horn of Africa, on Iraq, on Afghanistan, and on nonviolent action and people movements. And they're quite short and they're quite engaging. And to prepare these videos, USIP collects questions over social media for the experts. So these are really crowdsourced and you and your students can contribute questions right now for a video on Burma, as you can see on this slide. So you just submit them on Twitter using hashtag COVID and conflict. USIP experts are also available to speak directly to your students. We can do that sort of virtual programming even from our basements. <laughs> Um, and you can request a virtual speaker by emailing Megan after this session and our contact information will be shared at the end. Great. Next slide, please. All right. Teaching about peace building also gives students concrete skills they need to navigate this new normal. So many of the skills that are necessary for everyday peace building are also necessary in this extraordinary moment. Um, these include the skills you see here on this slide. So critical thinking, conflict analysis, collaboration, communication skills like active listening, mediation, negotiation, to name just a few. Um, you know, we can teach students to assert their opinion while being respectful and open to the idea of others, to listen with care and attentiveness, and to act responsibly when faced with conflict. Um, so USIP offers educators free lessons and activities to help your students develop these skills. Uh, one that is uh, very popular is our Peace Building Toolkit for Educators. It's a set of lesson plans that's very adaptable and flexible. 
It comes in a middle school and a high school version. But for the elementary school teachers on here, we've also taken um, some of the key lessons from the middle school toolkit and adapted them for upper elementary. Um, so you can find those on the link on the slide. And we also have online learning opportunities like some micro courses. These are free, three hour long, self-paced courses that introduce uh, students to the foundational topics in international conflict management and peace building. Um, so they're great for older students, for high school students, and for teachers who just want to expand your own knowledge of, of this field and this topic and content. And I should mention that as we move on to the next slide, some of those micro courses may be supplemented in the near future by some other free offerings that are a little bit more in depth exploration of some of our some of the core skills and concepts in our work. So we can keep you posted on that, too. Um, the next theme is that um, teaching about peace during this pandemic reminds students that even when a crisis feels overwhelming, we all have the power to make a difference. Peacebuilding stories and examples remind students that even in countries and communities that are facing the greatest levels of challenge and of violent conflict, there are individuals working to make things better. This is something that gets lost sometimes, but it's really a core element of our work to draw out and highlight and bring to life those real life examples. And we like to share this graphic with teachers. It's called the Despair Empowerment Curve. It's by educator Sheldon Berman, and he posed is that when we learn about a problem, we enter with a certain level of knowledge. And then as we learn more about the many challenges associated with this problem, we begin to dip down into despair. This may be where many of us and your students end up after watching the news. But we don't want to leave students in despair. Instead, we want to help them find ways to address their feelings, to help them gain a complete picture of the problem, to teach them strategies, and skills and provide them with the opportunity to do something about it so that they then begin to rise up out of the curve and towards empowerment. We'd like to encourage students at this time to think about what they can do to build peace during this pandemic, that they still and do have agency. And so we want to put out a call to your students to contribute to the hashtag peace and pandemics campaign that Megan already mentioned. Students can submit their own stories on social media using the hashtag. Um, they can post their own action or message for peace or they can share someone else's action or like one that's already on there that really inspired them or appealed to them. So this is the hashtag to use to contribute to that larger USIP campaign. All right, great. Um, so uh, next slide, please. All right, we've uh, talked at you a bit, and we'd like to pause now to hear from you. Um, so we've posed some of the reasons we think teaching about peace is vital during the pandemic and themes that we've heard from educators. Um, but we'd like to hear from the teachers among us now. So I'm actually going to invite two of our peace teachers, Emily and Matt, to switch over to video and we'll get you set up for that so that you can maybe share a bit and reflect um, on any of the, the themes that we've talked about or anything else that has struck you um, with the group. Uh, in the meantime, while we're getting them set up, uh, we're gonna put up a poll. And um, I'd ask for you to respond to this poll um, as we begin, as we get our, our two teachers on video here. And I will point out, I am I am not sure that everybody is either using it. Make sure, please, if it's asking you to put in the chat box why you selected those themes, I'd love for everyone to be able to see. So I believe you have two options of who you should, who you are sharing your chat with. Please make sure that it's you've selected all panelists and attendees um, as you share in the chat box so that everyone can see your thoughts. Uh, I'd like for this to be something we all can do together. I believe that's an option for everybody. Hi, Emily and Matt, we're gonna to turn to you in a second.
All right, we almost have everybody in. All right, um, why don't we uh, shrink the poll and I'm going to uh, turn it over to our teachers and please feel free to keep typing into the chat box um, as we're hearing from Emily and Matt. Um, so Emily, maybe I could start with you and turn it over if you don't mind introducing yourself. Great, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Anne Louise. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Emily Philpot, and I'm a teacher in Jackson, Mississippi, and I am one of USIP's Peace Teachers this year. And really just want to echo what's been said about the value of USIP and the resources they provide for teachers and educators during this time. And especially, um, well, I feel like it's important to teach about peace building at any time, but especially now, when students are more isolated than ever before in their lives, I think it's even more valuable for us to teach about the world, to include multiple perspectives, and to help foster and build empathy. And Megan highlighted and Anne Louise highlighted some of the resources, but I thought I would quickly share some that have been really valuable to me as a teacher in these last few weeks, um, as many of us have navigated this landscape of virtual learning. And so one of the first things I want to say is how fabulous the micro courses are that USIP has created and my students have really enjoyed using them and they are built around case studies and include um, perspectives from experts in the field and they have a variety of topics everything from media and arts for peace to religion and peace building to conflict analysis and if you um, like me have been trying to find really meaningful and engaging resources for students as they learn and work from home these are built for you and they are fantastic. And so that's one thing that has been really valuable to me. The second is the, and this was mentioned, the current news stories that are put out. And these have been fabulous for virtual discussions that I've had with my students. And I'll give you two quick examples. For my world history students, I had them read an article that was posted by USIP about the impact on and the effects on refugee communities around the world um, and that the special and interesting and horrible ways actually that COVID-19 is impacting those um, communities. And it really prompted some great discussion amongst my students. I also teach psychology and believe it or not, there's a lot of things that are applicable to that course as well. And so just this week, um, they read an article that was put out by USIP entitled, Can We Make Peace with Coronavirus? Environmental Peace Building Offers an Approach to Mobilizing Conflicting Parties Against COVID. And that worked really nicely with studies and research my psychology students have been doing about the power of superordinate goals and working together with others who are usually your enemies or those you don't get along with because you have to solve a larger problem. And again, that was um, a resource ready to go with information that I could count on to be accurate and was easily able to share with my students. So if you do not yet follow USIP on um, things like Facebook or Twitter, I really encourage you to do that as well as to check out their resources on the website. And um, I just want to say thank you to USIP for helping me become a better teacher and for allowing my students, even when they're isolated in their house, to really connect to things that are happening around the world. Thank you, Emily. Those are excellent examples. It's so nice to hear how you have used them in your classroom or your virtual classroom, I guess. Um, thank you. Uh, Matt, I'm going to turn to you, but I want to remind people about the Q&A feature. And so if you've got questions, please feel free to put them in there. Um, and we're going to be turning some, to some questions um, if we have any. Otherwise, we also are going to reflect on some of the things we just heard about. Matt, take it away. If you'll introduce yourself too first. 
Sure, I'm a high school teacher in Carborough, North Carolina. And um, I, I wanna echo a lot of what Emily said. You know, this is a really challenging time for a lot of students um, without giving away any information about any particular students. I've had two students whose families have split up over the last two months. I've had students who are working five days a week in construction to help their families pay bills. And one of the things I hear from students over and over is that the work they're doing in a lot of their classes feels pretty empty. It feels like they're just kind of turning in worksheets and it feels very abstract and it feels very disconnected from their new lives. So for me, I think one of the great things about teaching about peace right now, especially as pertains to the coronavirus, is it's one of the few things you can do that might feel very relevant to a student. Um, so, so I think that's really worthwhile. Another opportunity I think that comes out of this uh, moment is to think about, well, who can be a peacemaker? And it's really tempting to think about, you know, the Dr. Kings and the Gandhis of the world are peacemakers. But more than ever, I think in my students' lifetime, it's clear that other people are peacemakers too. Uh, you know, scientists are peacemakers. Uh, politicians are peacemakers. Lawyers are peacemakers. Hopefully students and teachers feel empowered to be peacemakers. I mean, I can't speak for Emily or the other teachers here, but I know that I certainly feel like when I'm giving the students a fuller picture of what's going on in the world today, I'm hopefully giving them some tools um, that they'll help them feel a little bit less helpless when they kind of interpret what's going on in the world. Um, if they can kind of analyze how did this start and then how might it end. Um, so for me, I guess, uh, oh, the last point I wanted to make, sorry, was that um, I also think this presents us with an opportunity to say to students, what do you want to learn? And so within a class of 30 students, you might have 15 students who want to focus on the US, but you might have 15 who want to study other places. Um, I was talking with a student earlier today, and she has family in El Salvador. And she was saying her family's okay because they live in the rural parts of El Salvador, but people who live in the cities have a much different um, experience. And again, that's the sort of thing that as teachers, we can facilitate, we can help students to tackle like, what is it like in San Salvador? Why is it so different than rural parts? Um, so for me, this is a really tough time to be a teacher, but it's also a very promising time to be a teacher. And, and it reminds me that the work that we do can really um, give students hope, uh, even under tough circumstances. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thanks for, for sharing with us some ways you've used it, but also ending on this note of hope. I, it's a tough time for everybody, but especially for young people. Um, and so anything we can do to be helping make their lives easier is, is the, what we want to focus on. Um, so I'm seeing some very interesting comments in the chat, and I'm going to turn it over to Ann Louise, who's been keeping an eye on them, uh, to maybe sh share what she's been seeing. Um, well, it's wonderful to see Emily and Matt. Thank you both for sharing your reflections and for being here today. Um, I'm seeing a lot of resonate, resonance um, around some of the themes that you've just raised. And so, Matt, the point that you just made about um, trying to find things that are re relevant to students, something that is really meaningful, is a point that Dave from Virginia also raised in his comment. Um, and I think some of the work that Megan mentioned earlier, the work that USIP is doing with youth in conflict zones can really help to make this even more relevant. Um, and our Generation Change Fellows have been really active during this time, have been focused on efforts to build resiliency in their own communities um, and to really work on the ground in places that are dealing with this in a very difficult way. Um, and I think that's another way those youth stories of peace builders can really help to make this seem more relevant to youth here in this country. Um, and then this idea of how being a peace builder doesn't have to mean taking on the big, huge issues and being a Nobel laureate. It takes, you know, little steps from all of us every day. And that's something that Barb had raised in, in Pennsylvania. Um, and also, Michael, in Idaho, this idea that we need to shine a light on the people who are doing this work, who are, you know, working hard in their communities to make a difference every day. There are lots and lots of heroes out there, um, and many of them are unsung and unseen. Um, and if we can elevate their stories and help people see that they too can start to make these changes, then that's how we can all build peace in our everyday lives. Um, so those are some of the comments that I saw and wanted to connect back to what Emily and Matt had been talking about. Yeah, and I also want to thank Emily and Matt and all of our peace teachers for doing this work. Um, I can be, um, it's a, we appreciate you, we appreciate all the teachers, but we appreciate the time and energy you put into teaching your students about peace. 
and for joining us for conversations like this so that we can hear from your learning. Um, it's something that maybe we always talk about when you're a peace teacher that first year is the learning year and it's something that um, there's a learning curve. And so it's so great to hear from people who've been through that learning curve because you've got some great ideas and insights for the rest of us. So thank you for everything you've been doing as well. Um, I wanted to raise one thought that uh, something, an idea that, that, that um, I've heard from teachers who've been doing this with their students virtually that is, has been really nice and resonates and covers some of these things we've been hearing about, which is the idea of doing peace building or peace builder projects. Um, and I raise it also because I'm going to do a shout out for Anne Louise, who was interviewed by the son of one of our colleagues as, <laughs> as a peace builder. And it was really cool because his entire class had video interviews where they interviewed somebody that they called, uh, that they considered to be a peacemaker. And what's great is that everything has to be done over tech now anyway. So these folks could be located anywhere. And then they shared their story um, in a video. And we were able to watch all the kids' videos of everybody that they think is a peacemaker. And I think it, what you see is that they actually are everyday people. And it's a really nice way to change that conversation. And we have in our toolkit and on our website, some lesson plans you can use and some other project planning um, uh, materials, if that's something that you wanna do with your students. Um, to have them be identifying people who are doing really great work in this moment, who maybe aren't known as peace builders every day, but who they think are peace builders or peacemakers um, and have them interview them and then put it out there and tag it as uh, for the Peace and Pandemics campaign. We really want this to be a global campaign, not just about coming from USAP, but it would be really great if it were something that were to take off and share all of these positive actions. Um, so there's some, there's some really cool ways to be integrating this into what you're doing. Um, and we hope that this has given you a sense of it. Um, I'm gonna do a quick check it looks like we've been so clear that there are no questions, which I think is great. Uh, unless anybody has, I'm gonna give you a chance to ask a final question um, in the Q&A, and I, I don't think we missed any in the, the chat. So this is, this, is a, this is the last call here for some, any questions you might have about teaching about this or about the US Institute of Peace, if there's something on your mind that you'd like to um, hear more about. And if I may, while folks are putting together their very last um, nugget of wisdom or their last question, I just wanted to go back to the comment, the chat um, comment that Nico had posted. Um, I think one of the things that's so important about teaching peace in general, but perhaps more than ever right now, is teaching peace as something practical. Um, you know, peace is something that can be a bit of a loaded term and people can um, sort of think of it as being a little bit hard to get your head around, a little bit abstract. It's eminently practical. And I think this idea of teaching skills and strategies that make it real is really important. And it goes back to that idea of relevance. It's something um, Nico and I talked about in his school in Alabama when I was there a year ago. Um, and it's something that I know many of us have talked about um, over time as well. And so making it real and, and practical and action oriented at this time, I think is, is part of what is the power behind teaching peace right now. Okay, great. Um, well, let's chat about, oh, of course, and now I see a question. Let's see. My first question, uh, connection. Great, fantastic. Um, great question. Oh, there's a couple that have come in. Great. So one is about um, how we might have, what are some opportunities for future talks with USAP, like done through Dreamwakers, a great partner to us. Um, they're a great resource for folks. We hope you would look them up. Um, they connect classroom with classrooms with experts um, be, with their idea that you can't be what you can't see, right? Did I get that right, Anne Louise? Um, so they're, they're a really cool program, um, but you can also uh, email me and I'd love to get you set up uh, to have a, a conversation with a USIP colleague or an expert, or if, if it works out, we could find somebody hopefully from the field to get you and your students connected with folks doing this work. Um, so my information will be at the end, um, but there are also lots of great partners who have these kinds of connections as well, and we hope you'll continue using them. Um, and I'm proud to say that we still do a lot of work with Dreamwakers, and so there will be some more cool stuff there too. Summer programming opportunities, um, good question. Um, so that's something that we're planning right now, along with everyone else. We've been pivoting over the last month or two to think about what does the summer look like? Um, and we've got some, uh, uh, 
things that are coming up that we're planning. And in fact, um, this is a pretty good segue, I believe, to our next, let me make sure that I'm not skipping anything here, but I think this is a good segue to our next poll question. If I could ask uh, Yusuf to pull that up. So speaking of some summer opportunities, um, great. Uh, I would love to hear who would be interested in more webinars on this content. Um, we would, we're looking into what we're gonna be doing for the summer and one of the things we're considering is more webinars. Um, this has been focused on the pandemic, um, but there are lots of other kinds of webinars that we can have focused on countries, focused on topics, focused on particular dates that are coming up or issues. Um, so I'd love to see if this is something that's of interest to people. And if so, please put into the chat and feel free to share it with everybody. What are some of the topics that you would be most interested in hearing more about? Um, and whatever, either something we've touched upon already today or something that we haven't touched on that you'd like to hear more about. Um, and then that'll give us a sense of how we want to do some of our planning for the summer for additional opportunities. And Louise, do you want to jump in? And is there anything that you'd like to share about either of these two? Um, no, I think we're eager to hear from you all. Um, and um, I mean, we're here to be a resource. Well, we're going to review in a moment what are some of the other virtual opportunities that exist with us and what are the ways you can get more plugged in. Um, so we're just eager to hear what is of greatest interest and relevance to you all. Great, thank you. Um, all right, if you could uh, go to the next slide, please. And we'll talk about ways to stay engaged. Um, and I think we'll go ahead and close the poll, please. Awesome. All right. Um, so uh, there are a number of resources that we have available to you in ways that we'd love to continue working with you. So uh, first up, are everything that we talk is that everything that we've discussed is on our website. So you can find them on the public education section of the USIP website, including uh, this list of USIP's virtual resources for teachers and students, which is the image you see here. Um, we actually pulled together everything that we thought would be most useful to you in this moment of distance learning, and that is available on our website. So hopefully taking all of the guesswork out of where to go to find things. Um, you also can stay on top of what USIP is doing and um, hear about some of this, these uh, peace builders and peace building projects by tuning into webcasts and podcasts put out by USAP. We've switched over to virtual programming. So while we can't have public events in person, we can do them online. Um, so we're doing more and more of them. And I think we have four coming up or that they're planning for four coming up. So uh, we're going to be doing more and more, I think, as we go. So that's a great resource as well. And then please sign up for our newsletter if you're not already signed up for it. Um, it's how we let people know about new opportunities that are coming up and new resources. Many of you probably already are signed up, which is how you heard about this. Um, but maybe you don't remember you receive it. So this is your chance to look back for it. Because I certainly don't remember what all the newsletters I receive. So, so now I'm, I'm prompting you to go back and dig out this newsletter. Um, so one of those opportunities that I'd love to share with you now, if we can go to the next slide, please is our Peace Trail on the National Mall. So some of you will be very familiar with this. Um, this is something we launched several years ago. Um, the Peace Trail on the National Mall is a self-guided walking tour that brings a peace lens to the experience of visiting this country's most famous veterans memorials and other sites on the National Mall in Washington, DC. It elevates the stories of key figures, institutions, and moments in history that demonstrate America's commitment to peace. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so you can see here a map of the Peace Trail and all of the monuments and memorials and sites that it hits. What's really cool that I'd love to announce is that we actually are going uh, to, about to launch two new ways to virtually engage and take the Peace Trail. One is a virtual presentation by a public education staffer, a member of our team who serves as your tour guide um, to walk you through the monuments and memorials and lead discussions around some of, um, some of the stops on the Peace Trail and a self-guided virtual reality tour using Google Tour Builder. So that will be something that you could send out and your students could do on their own. Um, and it's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. So 
stay tuned for additional information on both of these. Um, and we include this because taking your students on the peace trail might remind them that our country has emerged from very difficult times before and that we will do so again. So um, next slide, please. Man Louise. Um, yeah, and before I um, say a word of wrap up, I want to thank Barbara for nudging in the chat box and reminding all of us that a big opportunity that's coming up relatively soon is the International Day of Peace on September 21st and USIP's Peace Day Challenge. I think many of you know this already, um, but for those of you who don't, this will be our sixth year of the Peace Day Challenge, which is USIP's big broad campaign each year to turn the International Day of Peace into a day of action. Um, and we provide terrific resources for schools and we work with schools all across the country and we work with folks all around the world each year for, on the Peace Day Challenge. And so we are turning our heads now to thinking about what that will look like for this year. Um, and so we will absolutely have resources for you and we would love to have you all engage with us again. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like, but we will be ready for every contingency. Um, and so please stay tuned and we will be able to um, be a good resource for you on that as we um, as we plan ahead. So on behalf of all of us at USIP, I really want to thank you all for attending today. We knew this would be useful and I think um, it really has been. It's been great to see um, Emily and Matt and to have you all with us. And we really want to thank you all very sincerely for all that you are doing right now for your students and for your communities in the middle of this pandemic. We really appreciate you. We are here for you. We look forward to working with you. And so really hope that you will follow up and that we can continue to work together and find new ways to do so. Yes, I'd also just like to thank everyone for joining and Matt and Emily for popping on to provide your reflections, which were very useful. If you want to follow up with either Anne Louise or me after this, our contact information is on the slide. I will be sending around the PowerPoint to participants, so you will have all of these links at your disposal. Um, and please do stay in touch with us. Um, please email me if you want to explore anything in further detail. We are here to support you. We're very friendly. <laughs> we'll, we'll come up with some creative plans and ideas together. And um, please don't forget to take the very, very, very short survey that's going to pop up right after this to let us know how you think this went. Um, thank you again for joining. And please, we hope all of you take care of yourselves. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you all.